here's how to expose the narcissist ASAP. Hi, I'm Minette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So maybe your ears are getting all tingly and uh, maybe you think I have some magical way that you're going to expose the narcissist. Well, I do and I don't. So it's not magical, but it is very, very foundational and I will explain. To expose a narcissist, the most foundational and critical thing that you as an individual needs to do is to enforce your boundaries. Now, many times for many victims, for as long as they've been involved in abuse from a narcissist, your boundaries have corroded. Maybe you don't, you, you forgot what your boundaries were because they were, they were whittled away, chipped away little by little till you had none left. But I'm here to tell you today that for you, in order for you to move forward and prevent being a victim from a narcissist ever again, is for you to set boundaries in your life very strong boundaries, get very clear and concerned about what you expect, how you expect people to treat you and then enforce them. And that's very, very important to recognize when somebody like the narcissist is slowly whittling away at your boundaries that you don't let that happen. You know, for so many years, so many of us, we've told people what, what our boundary is, but then what happens is when people cross it or challenge it, we repeat it or we try to explain it or we try to justify it or we try to validate it somehow or we try to persuade that person to understand that this is your personal preference and you want to be respected. No, you should not have to persuade anybody if they're not willing to be respectful of your boundaries, out they go. It's that simple. Look, and how many of us have given people like the narcissist second chance, third chance, fourth chance, 100th chance, you name it, you get what I'm saying. That's another thing that, that needs to stop in the process of enforcing your boundaries because once you start doing that, that narcissist knows they can keep getting away with what they're doing to you. A narcissist loves control and they love to manipulate. And if they know they can cross your boundaries and watch you get all upset and angry and then take them back in, they will continue to do this cyclical abuse to you. So what does enforcing one's boundary look like? Well, it looks like this. As I mentioned earlier, we don't give them second, third, fourth, fifth chances to continue to disrespect us. And if someone is, you're in the same room trying to have a discussion with somebody, with a narcissist, right? And they start yelling at you, cursing you, belittling you. That's when you look for the nearest exit and run because you need to protect you. You need to understand that you are being belittled and disrespected and you are the one responsible to take yourself out of that room and leave the presence of that abuse. We don't wait for the narcissist to give us permission. No, they already know what our boundary is and you are just enforcing what you know how you want to be treated. Look, Narcissists are abusers and they want control over you. How do they do it? By breaking your boundaries. And so it is totally, completely up to you to enforce them. Because look, if you don't, you're the one who's going to be suffering consequences, not the narcissist. No, they're going to be reaping rewards and benefits from crossing your boundaries, like taking your money, uh, living in your home rent free, eating your food, telling you what to do, doing their own thing, cheating on you, stealing from you, you name it. You're the one who's going to be suffering the consequences. I want you to understand that. 
And I also want you to understand that the power is totally in your hands. You know, a manipulator will rage at your boundaries when you try to enforce it, but a good, decent person will respect them. Understand that. That is the major difference. Enforcing your boundaries puts the power and responsibility back in your hands where it belongs. In John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, it says, All who do evil a.k.a. the narcissists and other toxic evil people, right? They hate the light and they refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. That's right. The light in you exposes the darkness in the narcissist. That's why he or she cannot stand when you put up your boundaries because those boundaries expose the underlying evil that they want to come at you and abuse you with. And it goes on to say, but those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. You see the difference, the stark difference. And that's why I always encourage you, listen, you deserve someone just like you the good person, the empath, the Christian, that's who you deserve. And your boundaries help you to put the signal out to who is available to even uh, approach you and who is not. You want to understand that those boundaries are like a bolted gate that you need to make sure you know who you are allowing in and out of your life. So we know the narcissist loves darkness. Why? Because it covers up their evil. And in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 19, it says, For people love the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. That's why the darkness hates the light, because the light exposes the evil. And your light, your light agitates the darkness in the narcissist. That's why it's impossible to cohabitate with a narcissist. Did you know that? Your light, your beacon of light and goodness totally agitates that narcissist. So where you might be getting along for a little bit, let's say during the day, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, bam, they attack you. The narcissist attacks you. It's because that light just keeps agitating them. You know, in biblical times, thick, and high walls were built with heavy gates that kept enemies out and kept the residents inside the city safe, secure, and protected. You see that? So it's it's not like you're building a wall. Like let's let's think of an imaginary uh, twelve foot wall by three feet deep. Um, you, that wall is there to protect your power, your heart, your life, your values. There's a gate that opens up that you decide to open it and to allow who you want in or out of your life. And sometimes we may make a mistake and let a narcissist into our life, but that's not the end of the story. That, that only tells you that you need to point the exit to the narcissist and say, out you go and then lock it up behind you. That is your power. And what is the consequence of you not building boundaries, a protective wall around you? What the consequences is invasion, invasion of your life where the narcissist comes in, steals your peace, your happiness, your joy, your money, your home, your finances, your car, steals everything. Do you understand where I'm going with this? That you, the consequence to you is invasion. Look, the narcissist has a secret agenda and it is to infiltrate your life by control and manipulation, period. That's their evil secret agenda. And I just want you to understand too, that with boundaries, as much as they keep evil, hurtful, secret agenda filled people like the narcissist out, you will be drawing good, decent, wonderful people in. 
because that those boundaries will set the standard for who the kind of people you want in your life and that's why it takes more work right to set your strong boundaries but in the end it's to build great peace in your heart protection and to give you a beautiful inner nucleus inner circle of wonderful people who are a blessing to your life so leave your comments down below and let me know what if you have any prayer requests know that i love you and pray for you daily and if you found this helpful do hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed do hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.